Five ways my parents prepared me for STEM career. Step number one. Step number one. Um, they gave me good early child care. They gave me good early child care. What does that mean? My mom uh, worked. My mom worked um, when I was a child. And so... And, and so she sent me to a babysitter um, early. Hey, someone's watching, just let me know who you are um, so I can greet you. Yeah, she, she worked early. So she sent me to a um, person I call uh, Joyce Morgan. I call her Auntie Joyce um, and, 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 my aunt Joyce, or uh, I call her my early child care teacher, she taught me or she really assisted my grandmother in teaching me how to read at an early age. All right. So I was staying with her from a toddler and my grandmother was teaching me to read and she would um, reinforce it every day. So I was reading C Spot Run books at three years old um, because she basically um, decided to make her basement a makeshift early childhood care center. I mean, literally she uh, was a, a woman who was married to a to a husband that was making sufficient enough to take care of her and um, she raised children um, she had three children um, but she decided to take children into her home and really train them early so she was teaching us to read really early I learned to read at three years old why because of the dedication of Joyce Morgan um, uh, my grandmother was teaching me as well, so they were basically tag team. My grandmother was a nurse, and so she couldn't take care of me. She was working as well. So both my maternal um, uh, parents were, were working from an early age, and um, but they made sure that, hey, hey, Miss Charles, how are you doing? Um, they made sure that they didn't just send me to any babysitter. Like, uh, this was someone that took us to the library and um, took us out to, to learn things. She was avid about early childhood education. So step one to preparing someone in STEM, a child in STEM, they have to... Um, be learning early. Like, there's no Google Gaga at two years old. There's reading, see Spot Run at two years old, right? Like, there's no play. Like, oh, we just go out and play and watch TV. Mm -mm, we're not watching TV. I'm trying to set myself up here. We're not watching TV. We're, we're learning at two and three years old. And um, that was pivotal for me, step one. Uh, gave me a good early childhood, good, good early child care. Number two, we're talking about five ways my parents pre prepared me for a STEM career. Number two, uh, they gave me independence. I'm a latchkey kid. I'm Generation Xer, and uh, our generation was very independent, especially the ones of us that grew up in the city of New York. I'm from New York City. And back in the day, parents really, the baby boomer parents really gave us leeway. Um, they gave us a lot of freedom. I mean, at five years old, I remember five, six years old, I was on a plane and they had a custom. This is a custom of the planes. The stewardesses would take care of children on planes. They didn't have parents taking their kids down places just to come back. Um, they 
enlisted the help of, uh, we call them stewardesses at the time, they're called flight attendants now, and children would fly on planes by themselves. Like when I said I did that a couple of weeks ago, people were shocked. I'm like, that was a, that's normal. So at like a young age in the summer, I would be, I would get sent to Florida by myself. On the plane by myself. Like I didn't need to be accompanied by my parents. This would be unheard of today. <laughs> Independence. Um, we would walk. I, I remember I, I, my first couple of years in school, I went to public school. And I lived in Hollis, Queens, across the street from PS 118. And I convinced, you know, my grandmother and my mother, they used to walk us to me to school. And by second grade, I convinced my parents to let me walk by myself across the street to school. Like, I walked to school. I didn't have them walk me to school. Hey, Daddy, what's going on? We had independence. By the time I was maybe 13, I was staying home. <laughs> they like you you build trust in your kid it's like it depends on the child of course but if you train them from a young age of independence and trust by the time i was around 13 years old i had my own key to the house i learned how to turn on and off the alarm i learned they, they gave me guidelines and as long as you keep the trust going you know, you kept the, the tr they kept the trust going. I kept the trust going. That was important to me. I knew I didn't want to get myself into any trouble because I loved being able to be independent. Come home, do my homework. I didn't have to stay by anybody's house that I didn't want to stay by. I didn't have to stay, go. I used to, at the time, go to my father's um, job and have to stay there and wait for him to get off like 6, 7 o'clock. And I didn't like that. So... There was, so there was this, they, they say, okay, we're going to, we're going to give you some responsibility. And if you maintain the trust, you can keep it going. Um, they gave me a lot of independence. My dad says Jamaica too. Hey, Miss Charles says she wouldn't miss my presentation. That's, that's good. I got a lot of independence early. I mean, you go to New York. Back in the days, they're literally children on buses by themselves. They're pe children on trains. I was taking the train at 15, 16 years old by myself. Now, like, I think we're a little bit too um, umbrella, they call it, helicopter. It's not healthy, in my opinion. All right, so independence. Number three, you're talking about five ways my parents prepared me for a STEM career. And as you're seeing, it has nothing to do with science. <laughs> I haven't said anything to do with science yet. So this can be any, I think, professional career. Number three, they put me in safe, empowering schools. Safe, empowering schools. My sixth grade teacher was, is on here right now. This is so key. I, I went to private institutions. I did not go to public school my whole high, um, uh, career. Now, I did, I'm not someone that went to Adventist school my whole life. I went to Adventist school, my, I mean, public school my first and second year. But after that, I literally went to a Christian school. It's called the Seventh Day Adventist Institution, Excelsior uh, SDA School. And what it did was it provides small classrooms sizes. It provided a spiritual environment. It provided safety. It also provided provided empowerment. They they really encourage students to be their best. Um, for instance, I'm an African American. They promoted Black History Month. Like I can't understand how I live in places here where schools don't celebrate Black history. Like, how did I learn about George Washington Carver without my schooling? Like, literally, the empowerment that occurred in my young years to show me that I can do great things. You, they, they, they empowered me. You know, nowadays they have, you know, I went to a, 
a school board uh, talks, uh, one of the ladies of the school board spoke and she talked about how there's an issue right now in the system, public school system, where they're overcrowded. And some people like brag about that. Like I, I go to a school that has hundreds of people. That's overcrowded. It's actually not good for education. Like the smaller the class size, the, 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 the greater the, the teacher, the student ratio, the more learning occurs in the classroom. Like, um, and so when I, I remember when I was younger, you know, people would show off that they went to a, a large school. And looking back, actually, it's not a good thing. Uh, intimacy is so crucial. So intimacy with teachers who empower you to learn, who are patient with you, as, as my sixth grade teacher was, right? Like, who, who really push excellence is so critical and if you're if you're sending your kid to a school whose teacher doesn't empower them you know it's really uh dangerous especially in the young years where they're saying oh maybe they're not a math person like that that's, that those kind of conversations just didn't happen in my institution in my school we could do great things. I remember I was in fifth grade and a poem that we learned was, I am special. There's no one in the world like me. Like it, it was foundational. So be wary of institutions who's, where teachers and, and administrators are downgrading children. And it happens disparately with children of color. It happens disparately with male children of color. That doesn't, that didn't happen in my school. So number three, they put me in safe, empowering schools. Number four, they pushed me for excellence. They pushed me for excellence. All right. So um, I told you about empowering school. So many of the institutions, they took us to museums. I remember in high school, um, my high school teacher, uh, Vivian English, she was like, you need to go to a, a college prep program, right? And my, my parents supported her in allowing me to do that. They expected high things. I remember growing up as a kid, and my mom had a, a my mom has a sibling who's a, a registered nurse, and a another sibling who's a physician, and tons of cousin, cousins, maybe around seven who are physicians. And she would push those people, like such and such is an emergency doctor, such and such is a internist. This person, you know is a, a different type of physician. This person is a lawyer. This person is a judge. Th like they pushed excellence. Like they had high expectations. They supported my teachers who then pushed me to high. So you as a parent need to always look for different things that will push your child beyond the limit, the, the, the just simple requirements. For instance, my program, Phenomenal STEM Prep, that's an example of something that goes beyond what they're learning in the classroom. You give that to them on a side to say, listen, you can go beyond. You must go beyond. Like that should be something pushed from young. Number four, they pushed me for excellence. Like they had high expectation. They gave me constant examples in my family, uh, in history, uh, that I can go, I can be excellent too. And they, they, they supported my um, empowering institutions that provided me uh, opportunities that came beyond uh, the classroom at the level that I was in. Hey, Tosh, how you doing? Number five. Number five, and this is crucial, they didn't pay my way. They did not pay my way. Um, <laughs> this is so important. Um, I am who I am today because I paid for my schooling. 
All right. So my parents helped a little bit. My mom helped a little bit. My dad helped a little bit. Um, and I'm not talking about high school. Like, yeah, you know, my mom really pushed education and she struggled to get me through a uh, high school private institutions that whole time. But when I got to Oakwood, they gave me some money. But remember, it cost me $10,000 a year to go to school. That's nothing compared to what's now. But um, so they could give me what they could, but I had to really support myself through federal student loans, scholarships, and working. And that made me such a strong person. That made me also take money very seriously to the point where when I got to graduate school, I made sure that I would not be in debt, that I was getting paid my whole way to go to graduate school because I learned the value of money early. They didn't pay my way. I remember when I was in high school, I was um, selling things. I was making money for myself to support myself. There was a point in time where I was buying my entertainment systems, you know, my TV. Like, I was buying it with my hard-earned money. Why? Because they didn't spoil me by giving me everything. They did not pay my way. That's crucial. A lot of people try to, you know, I want you to see the, the, the theme. The theme is a, it's, 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 it's a lot of independence. It's, it's so crucial because what it does is it helps the, the, the student move to excellence on their own. And so when you start taking calculus classes and chemistry classes, there is such a level of responsibility that was in me from early that I did not take things from, I didn't take time for granted because I knew the value of time. I didn't take money for granted because I was paying for it. And I had this level of responsibility that I really managed my time and study habits very well because of that independence. This works for anything. People think, feel like they have to be a, a science person or a math person. Really, foundationally they need to know how to read very well foundational they have to know how to read very well so by me being in step one a good early childhood kick child care i was reading and my language was good and so the language that i taught you this before is the left side of the brain that same left side that is being critical that is learning language and reading is also uh, promoting analytical thinking. So by learning to read early will enhance the brain to understand math early. So it was reading and independence, right, that fostered the development of my brain to be able to handle hard subjects. It is feeling confident in myself. The confidence that I gained from institutions that promoted my excellence, that did not denigrate me, that, that did not ignore uh, my culture's impact on society, all that built a confidence in, in me that I could actually learn this material, that I'm not inferior to anyone. And then the push towards excellence to go beyond just the, what's minimally required taking college prep courses beyond what was required of me. That was crucial. And lastly, my stability in a STEM career, not having the pressure uh, financially came from having to put my own college bill for the most part. It helped me become responsibly re responsible financially, and I respected the courses and the and the college classes that I was taking because it was on me. 
that's the five ways my parents prepared me for a STEM career. Thanks for joining. If you guys have any questions, I see you guys watching. Uh, feel free to ask me uh, now. Um, just to remind you guys that every it's never too late. I have a, a three-month program called Phenomenal STEM Prep. And this is for pre-kindergarten all the way to 12th grade, different levels, uh, depending on their age. Them learning the basics of, of biology, chemistry, and uh, physics, uh, especially uh, for the older age groups. I go beyond even that. I teach them financial responsibility so that they're actually prepared uh, to, to do well. Uh, at the college level, not just uh, academically, but financially as well. So feel free uh, to check out my website, www.phenomenalstemist.com. Um, you can find me on Instagram. Please like and follow me on Phenomenal State uh, Stemist Facebook page. And like and share for me. Thanks, guys, for watching. Miss Charles, my dad, Tosh, you guys have a good evening.